Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first lesson in our series of lessons about what took place at the Constitutional Convention that was convened following the failure of the Articles of Confederation to deal with Shays' Rebellion. Uh, in the aftermath of Shays' Rebellion, it was decided that the 13 states needed to send delegates to a convention in Philadelphia to revise the Articles of Confederation, and 12 of the 13 states, with the exception of Rhode Island, sent delegates. And so the focus of this lesson and our essential question for today is, what challenges did delegates to the Constitutional Convention face? So at this time, it would be appropriate for you to write that across the top of your notes. Uh, we are going to do some vocabulary review before we get into today's lesson. These words are words you've already learned, but uh, they are going to be used in today's lesson, so I am going to review them. Uh, the first word we're going to review is republic. A republic is a country in which decisions are made by elected representatives. So a republic does not have a monarch. It does not have a king or queen. Uh, for example, Great Britain, even today, is a constitutional monarchy. It is not a republic because technically the Queen of England is still the head of state in uh, England. We elect our head of state, which makes us a republic. And our other vocabulary word is extremely important. A constitution is basically a document, a written plan that provides the basic framework for government. So countries that have constitutions, that constitution literally spells out in detail the structure of that government, um, what the titles of people within that government are, what powers they have, how they're elected, if they're elected. Um, and uh, the relationship between um, the central government and the states, provinces, or other jurisdictions within that government. So a constitution, think of it as a map, a very detailed and binding map that sets up what a government is like. And what we're looking at in this particular lesson is how it was that our constitution was written. Actually, that's going to be the next few lessons. So the first thing we want to do is come up with um, a question on our left side. Uh, what rules did the convention adopt? 12 of the 13 states sent people to attend this convention. Uh, those people were given the power to make decisions about revising the Articles of Confederation. And so when they all got together, they had to come up with some rules that would help them do the important work that they were there to do. So what were those rules? Well, the first rule was pretty much to um, break the rule that sent them there. The Articles of Confederation were considered so bad that the decision was made to replace the Articles completely instead of revise them. So they did not take the original Articles in Confederation and add to them. They basically fed them to the shredder and said, we're not even going to work with this document anymore we're gonna write an entirely new document. So if the Articles of Confederation were the first constitution of the United States, the very first decision the Constitutional Convention made was to get rid of that document entirely and replace it with an entirely new constitution. As I just said, they decided an entirely new constitution would be written. So they're getting rid of the articles, they're writing a brand new constitution. A, creating a brand new system of government for the 13 states. They made the decision that all of their discussions were going to be kept secret until a final document was finished. So basically until the whole thing do was done and they were ready to submit it to the public and to the states to be approved, they were not going to be talking about or sharing uh, the decisions they made along the way. Um, and the reason for that was they did not want people on the outside influencing what decisions they were making on the inside. 
Um, if the people on the outside knew some of the things they were talking about, you might have had protests in the streets, you might have had um, social upheaval, you might have had people really trying to influence and scare the delegates away from making the decisions they thought were best for the country as a whole. So they basically said, until we're done, we aren't going to share anything. There's a, there's a cone of silence. There's a rule of secrecy. Uh, they even went so far as to nail the windows of Independence Hall in Philadelphia shut so that their deliberations could be done in private. And um, this was during the summer. And in the summer in Philadelphia, it's pretty toasty and humid. So they basically made things less than pleasant for themselves by nailing the windows shut. They decided they were going to create three branches of government. And this is where you, those vocabulary words come into play, legislative, executive, and judicial. They were going to basically create three parts to the government. A legislative branch, which would be responsible for writing the laws. An executive branch, which would be responsible for carrying out the laws. And a judicial branch, which would be responsible for interpreting the laws. Keep in mind, under the Articles of Confederation, there was only a legislative branch. They only had a Congress. They did not have a leader, and they did not have a court system. So under the Articles of Confederation, the legislative branch essentially served the function of being both the legislative and the executive, because any executive action that needed to be taken, nine of the 13 states had to agree to, which didn't happen very often. Um, so they decided to create these three branches of government right here, as I already stated. And so this is kind of the 35,000 foot overview of everything we're about to learn over the course of the next week, week and a half in class. So, uh, you know, put your seatbelts on kids because, because here we go. So let's look at the specific challenges that the delegates to the convention faced. What kinds of decisions did they have to struggle with? And what kind of answers were they going to come up with? Um, these are extremely important um, and they're gonna give you a broad overview of the work that lies ahead in creating this brand new kind of government for this brand new kind of country in this, what to the Europeans was a brand new part of the world. First, let's talk about the challenges they faced in terms of creating the legislative branch of government. First thing they had to do is settle this whole issue between big and small states. How should the different states be represented in the new Congress? Should every state have the same amount of power uh, like they did under the Articles of Confederation? Should Rhode Island have the same amount of power as New York? Should Virginia have the same amount of power as Delaware? Or should a state be given power based on how many people lived in that state? So if a state had a larger population, should the state be given power based on the size of its population relative or compared to the other states? Um, that may not sound like an interesting question, but it's actually a huge question. It was a huge question then. It's even a huge question now in today's world in terms of um, how people feel about the House versus the Senate, and we'll get into that in the next lesson, and how people feel about the way we elect the president, which we're going to get into um, two lessons down the road. So, But for now, all you need to know is that they really had to figure out this big state, small state thing. Um, there is also the sticky issue of slavery. Uh, the southern states, basically all the states from Maryland on south, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia, all had slaves. And, you know, did those slaves count as people? And therefore, should those states get more representation in the new Congress because those slaves were people? Or because those slaves were considered property, were treated like property, and were not given the rights of citizenship, should they not count towards a state's population? Um, that's a very ugly question, but it was a very real question. Uh, in terms of creating the executive branch, remember under the Articles of Confederation, there was no single leader. 
um, if they were going to create an executive a leader for the country what kinds of questions did they have to wrestle with uh, the first was what powers should we give to the executive we do not want another king we want to have an executive that has the ability to make decisions but does not have the ability to exercise unlimited power so what powers should the executive have also how long should the executive serve if we're going to come up with a way of choosing or electing the executive um, do we have them serve for life do we have them serve for seven years do we have them serve for four years um, do we allow them to be chosen over and over again or do we put a limit on how long they can serve all of these were very real questions to the delegates at the Constitutional Convention and then should there be one executive or do we not want to give that much power to one person should there perhaps be say three executives who have to work as a committee to make decisions uh, that may sound bizarre to us in the year 2019 it happens to be 2019 right now or should we split that power amongst three people so that no one person has too much power just in case we happen to elect a crazy person uh, these were questions that they really did wrestle with so uh, what we've done here ladies and gentlemen is we've established the groundwork for the conversations we're going to have in class over the next week week and a half as we discuss how our government was created how the constitution was written at the constitutional convention and therefore how the structure and function of the government we have today was created back in the late 1700s because ladies and gentlemen the structure of the government we have today was created in the late 1700s with that ladies and gentlemen it is that time once again it is time for you to take a few moments to put into your own words the challenges faced and the decisions made by the delegates to the constitutional convention when it convened in may of 1787 in philadelphia at independence hall the same place where the continental congresses met the same place where the declaration of independence was written what decisions were made and what did they struggle with uh, this is just your introductory lesson but you can write a couple sentences summarizing what i've just shared with you and uh, chances are i'm probably going to have you share those with the class pretty soon so have at it kids and with that this is once again mr blumendahl signing off on the waldo middle school social studies youtube network